Hello everyone, and in uh, today's episode, we're just going to quickly tackle turning before we move on to the jump. And first off, we're just going to fix this direction system a little bit because um, it was cancelling itself out. So we'll, we'll get on to that first. Okay, so in this first part, just to show you what's happening exactly with our direction system, because we're adding them together. Sometimes they'll cancel themselves out and become zero, which is uh, when it's zero, we find it this turning system to not work. So we need to fix that. And how I'm going to fix that is uh, I'm going to do what we did over here and turn it into a vector two D. This way, it should do the branch correctly. Yeah, so here we see that when the vector 2D and both of them are equal to zero, which is when we're definitely not moving, it should work correctly. And there we have it, the uh, directions that weren't working before now work, and great, and now we'll get on to the rest of the video. Okay, so to start, the first thing we're going to do is get our turn animation. So, we already have a turn animation. And you also just get that by going content, player character, animations, mannequin. So we already have a turn animation, but what we want is an animation montage, which will allow us to use the root motion. So here we have this left turn, and if we right click on it and go up to create, and create an animation montage and we'll just call it turn montage great and then from there we need our animation blueprint go to our third person blueprints open up the character that you're working in and then from there we can just click mesh and in the add-in class, we can press this button to take us directly to our animation blueprint. I also, I also have it open up here. Brilliant. So from there, all we need to do is type in play montage here, and you'll also see it has so many more options compared to a normal play animation. And there, we're just clicking our turn montage. We'll create a custom event for this. Just call it turn. And then we want to get our reference to the character inside it called our mesh. And now we just need to get this event to play. So we'll go back to our third person. And what I do when I'm testing animations is I'll just make a quick one button press to get it working. So one, that's usually a really easy one. If you type in the letter, it doesn't always show up with the uh, button input. From there, let's forget our animation graph reference which will hold our new turn now i'm expecting that this shouldn't work right away and now you see if we press one its feet are still its feet are still stuck to the floor which is just because our ik is still working but there's the easy way around that so in our animation blueprint we want to make a boolean variable called turning which i've already made one here and then we just want to set it to true whenever we go into our animation montage 
and set it to false whenever we're coming out, which can be on completed or blend out. And then we can now use this variable here because our should move is what decides if our IK is on or off, as seen in our animation blueprint here. I've gone back to our event graph. Now we just want to do a select or may, maybe it doesn't matter, drag now, drag doesn't matter. Plug this in here, yeah, there we go. And put, take that. So this way we have it so that if we're moving, it makes our should move true. But also if we're not moving and we're doing our turn in animation, it will also take it correctly. And now if we press 1, we got our turn animation. Now I'm just going to take a look at our turn animation just to make sure it's all correct. So another thing we also want to do is we want to make this blend out relative to some more complete turns. So if we just put it at point 0.1 or just 0 first and then test that. Yeah. So usually with the blend out or maybe set this one higher. So Let's see if it works. Yeah, so if it blends out higher, it will cut off the animation and the movement before it can actually make the full turn. There you can see it's not doing a full 180 degrees. For some reason, when I first started that, it wasn't paying attention to the blend out, but just to be safe, we want to set this to zero. And now, we have our turn animation working well enough. It doesn't do a full 180, or maybe it does, and it was just a, it's just a bad angle. But now we have our turn set in place so that we can uh, set up some parameters to make it do it naturally. Okay, so now getting back into our play a character blueprint, we now want to find, try and make it so that this turn animation or turn event is implemented naturally rather than with just a manual input. Um, we're basically going to utilize this blueprint here and what we want to do is make it so that if our target arrow is behind us when we move, it will then do the turn animation. So, what we need to do is we need to ask another question here. So, we drag this out a little bit. And we make another branch. And what we want is this value here which is what we're going to compare. So, when we want the absolute value, just so that we don't have to deal with uh, negatives. And we want to find out if this is in a range. Yeah, so, between 180 is directly behind us, and then something like 160. I think that's a clear enough indication that we're trying to go backwards. So then, 
If it's not true, we're just using the turn system. Usual. If it is, then we want to do our full turn. And so now, if we do that, brilliant. Now, I think there will be an issue. Yeah, if we're holding down our move button, then the turn will break a little bit. So here, we need it to turn off whenever we are turning. Luckily, inside our animation graph, we have this turning variable that tells us whenever we're turning. So here, it's a little bit ugly to have three branches, but I can't find a way of making a combination because usually you can do things like and, and pool and stuff like that. But there's nothing like that here that works the way we want it to. So we just have to use three branches. And we want our condition to be that turn variable. And well, really, we want it so that we're not turning. We could have it go through false, but I've found that it's just not very good practice. It's a, it's a lot cleaner if you just use this not node in compared to having it run through falses. And now, when we turn, it should wait for us to turn and then move. Brilliant. And then just to finish up, I want to look at our turn montage. And say if you think that's too slow, we could upscale it a bit to 1.2 to get a bit of a faster turn. because We don't want it to implement or slow down the character movement in any way. And brilliant, now we have our turn. Leading on, so next time we can get onto our jumping system and just making it feel a little bit more realistic to stop things like that happening. Right, well, uh, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.